Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at this Compaq Armada E500 notebook that I saved from the trash. So again this thing was completely free because it was a trash find. Or at least I saved it from the trash like I said. Uh, anyhow, um, it's a notebook from around 2001. This particular unit was produced in uh, I think January or February of 2002. Features a 1 GHz copper mine Pentium 3 processor, 256 MB of RAM, it came with 128. It also came with a 30 GB Hitachi Travel Star that I assumed was dead, I haven't actually done any testing on that drive uh, after that. So I replaced it with a 40 GB that I had laying around, and that drive seems to work okay. So that's pretty nice. It also has the uh, top of the line display that you could get at a time. This is a 1400 by 1050 LCD display of course active matrix and it is very nice indeed the overall condition of the machine is pretty good the uh, keyboard is definitely not very worn at all I mean if I take a look I see some shininess on the I, the O, the P, K and the L but the trackpad has only very slight wear and then I shine some more light on it it's really only a couple keys that appear a bit shiny but it's really not noticeable at all and it appears to be very good I've also heard that the speakers on these are amazing and from testing they definitely uh, sound a lot better than most laptops that you find even today so that's a very nice bonus as well so yeah that's basically uh, that part of that uh, of the video done <laughs> so here you can see the Compaq logo here it says Armada uh, a year later, these machines were superseded by the Compaq Evo lineup of laptops, pretty much. And in 2003, the uh, Compaq HP merger was finally uh, occurring, so or happening rather. So after that, it was basically all uh, HP products, and the Compaq name slowly died. It is definitely still very much a Compaq brick, though. Built like a tank, it lasts forever. So we take a look around the laptop here, on the bottom we find a couple compartments, uh, below this one is the network card, below this one is the hard drive, it's very easy to take out, here is a Windows 2000 professional certificate of authenticity, for those of you that care, <laughs> I really don't have a shit ton of Windows 2000 serials anyway, and they're all free because it has no activation. It also has an optical drive, this is, there we go, it says here January of 2002, Compact Computer Corporation, it doesn't say what kind of special drive it is, it says DRV CDRW, so this is a CDRW drive, so no DVD drive yet, but that's no biggie at all, but it is, it is a CD burner at least, that's pretty cool. Of course, we also get a 3.5 inch floppy drive, which is typical for the time. And uh, on this side, we find the battery, which we can pull out like that. Looks something like this. Here is a button to show you the uh, charge indicator. Battery on this is stone dead. Uh, wasn't expecting anything else, to be honest. I don't even know how long this laptop has been out of use. If I were to make an estimation, I'd say. Probably 2007, maybe even earlier than that, maybe 2005 or so. I mean, uh, most people bought uh, Pentium 4 laptops pretty soon after these, uh, or uh, after they become available. So, just, you know, a tour of the ports. Uh, you can definitely see that this is a very nice business-grade laptop with a lot of options. It has an Ethernet port, which is, of course, 10100. This is an Intel NIC. We have a 56k modem, we have headphone jacks over here and a Kensington lock. We also get the composite out and a IR blaster for infrared. We have AC here, a busted USB 1.1 port, a serial port, VGA, docking station connector, parallel port, a PS2 mouse or keyboard port, or both. I have a breakout cable that would allow both. Nothing on this side but the battery. On the front we have what we already discussed, and that's basically the outside of the laptop done. So, let's actually hook it up and power it on and see what she does. 
All right, let's power it on. And there we go, the compact logo. Always takes a while to get past this screen. And then it goes. I decided to keep it original and put Windows 2000 on it. I also tried Windows NT4, but I just for the life of me could not get the uh, the network cards running. Oddly enough, everything else was working fine, but it it kept complaining that it needed to enable bus mastering for the PCI cards. And I was like, what? That's not how that works. And I just couldn't figure it out, so I decided to just. Uh, Reload my copy of Windows 2000 where everything works out of the box just fine. After I installed the drivers, that is, but at least it had the audio driver and the video driver ready in place. I just needed to install the modem, the network, and the uh, touchpad driver. And that was basically all I really needed to do. Some software tweaks here and there, of course, but that's a given. Now you can also see the uh, gorgeous pixel density of this display. 1400 by 1050 and there we have it there's really a huge amount of uh, vertical space it is pretty nice if only my camera was actually straight <laughs> but it's not So let's change to a slightly more video friendly resolution here. Alright. Alright, that one isn't working. I need to switch to the other one. Up until I think version 1.8, uh, CPU Z actually worked just fine. Or 1.80, I should say. So let me zoom in here, so you can see what's going on there. As you can see, we have a Intel Pentium 3E on a Nano BGA socket, so it's not a socket, it's of course soldered. It is the copper mine core, 180 nanometer, 1000 megahertz, 256k of cache. Compact mainboard, still need to update the, uh, the BIOS version on this. But, uh, yep, it is the trusty 440BX chipset. 256 megs of SD RAM running at 100 megahertz. It's only detecting one slot and it thinks there are three. There's only two slots in here, I can assure you that. But yeah, I guess that's what happens when you put a uh, desktop CPU in a mobile form factor. Because it actually appears to be a full 440BX chipset anyway with a full desktop of Pentium 3. I need to do a repaste because it is really loud and it's really hot running, but uh, that's something that I'll have to do off camera. One thing that I do want to see this is uh, whether the uh, speed step is functioning properly. So I just set the uh, speed step utility to optimal performance on battery. And now it is indeed stepping down to 700 megahertz. It's something. It'll save a bit of heat. Save a bit of power. I also have Microsoft Office 2000. So we can make a new document here in Word 2000. No, I do not want to register my copy of Office 2000 Premium. First of all, because it is not, a, not technically legal. <coughs> but that's okay. And of course we have Clippy! The cancer of the Windows 2000 days. Hmm. I also have a remote desktop connection client, which I can actually use to connect to one of my servers here, which is fun. This is a Windows 2012 R2 server running uh, a Minecraft server. Just because. And uh, aside from that, this install is pretty barren. It's fully up to date. Um, I installed the Mozilla Firefox 10 ESR browser, so it can still browse the web somewhat. 
hooked it up to uh, my virtual machine that hosts my network share for legacy computers like this which is a Windows Server 2003 based machine and that works just fine as well let's go to my network locations and here it is, here is the share I've got for old Macintoshes as well as Windows PCs still working on a library of software and drivers and stuff like that but, uh, that's a work in progress so the laptop is working just fine it is pretty zippy, it is actually very quick now that I've upgraded to 256 megs of memory it's definitely noticeable that the system is a bit snappier now and uh, overall I think this is this that laptop was definitely worth saving and uh, it'll definitely be cherished in my collection so I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you all for watching I'll see you guys in the next video